Welcome back to Navy Sea Life, where we explore the thrilling world of naval aviation. Today we're diving into the heart-pounding realities of landing on an aircraft carrier. From high-stakes cable breaks to split-second decisions, join us as we uncover the challenges faced by pilots in the ultimate test of skill and courage. It's a classic image, a U.S. Navy pilot flying toward the aircraft carrier, only to land at full speed on a small runway in the middle of the sea. Taking off and landing on an aircraft carrier is one of the most exciting and challenging experiences for a pilot. But what happens when the arresting cable, the critical safety feature responsible for bringing the aircraft to a stop, breaks? In this video, we'll show you what kind of disaster has already occurred and the consequences when a pilot cannot land on the flight deck. As an aircraft approaches the runway, the arresting cable comes into play. This high-tension steel wire acts as a brake, slowing down the aircraft and bringing it safely to a stop. But in the split-second scenario of a cable break, the stakes are high, and the pilot must rely on their training and expertise to bring the aircraft to a safe stop. When an arresting cable breaks, the aircraft coming in for a landing suddenly loses the ability to stop. With the runway rapidly approaching, the pilot must take immediate action to prevent a catastrophic crash. In this life-or-death situation, the pilot must use all his training and skill to bring the aircraft to a stop, either by using the backup arresting cables or by diverting to another runway. The aftermath of a cable break can be devastating. It can result in damage to the aircraft, the carrier deck, or even injury to the crew. The carrier must immediately go into emergency protocols, secure the deck and perform a damage assessment. The broken cable must be repaired as soon as possible, and the carrier must be ready to resume operations as soon as possible. The backup arresting cable is typically located at the end of the runway, and it acts as a backup in case of a cable break. This cable is designed to withstand the same level of tension as the main cable and is capable of stopping an aircraft in the event of an emergency. However, in some cases, the backup cable may not be enough to bring the aircraft to a safe stop. In these situations, the pilot must divert to another runway or, in extreme cases, eject from the aircraft. A U.S. Navy pilot can leave an aircraft in several ways depending on the specific circumstances of the situation. One common method is ejecting from the aircraft using an ejection seat. Ejection seats are equipped with a rocket motor that propels the seat and the pilot out of the aircraft in the event of an emergency, such as a malfunction or loss of control of the aircraft. Ejection seats typically have a variety of safety features, including a canopy that protects the pilot from wind blasts and debris, a parachute that deploys automatically to safely bring the pilot to the ground, and a survival kit that includes supplies and equipment needed to survive in the wilderness. Bailing out requires the pilot to quickly unbuckle their safety harnesses, open the cockpit canopy, and jump out of the aircraft. If the aircraft is on the flight deck of an aircraft carrier, the pilot may also have the option of using the ship's rescue and recovery systems, such as a hovering helicopter or net, to safely evacuate the aircraft. These systems are designed to quickly and safely rescue a pilot in the event of an emergency and are an essential part of the carrier's crew training and equipment. Besides the cable breaking, other risks can happen when landing on an aircraft carrier. Let's take a look. Crosswinds. One of the biggest challenges that pilots face when taking off and landing on a carrier is crosswinds. These winds can gust and change directions in an instant, making it difficult for a pilot to control the aircraft and maintain a safe flight path. 
Pilots must be able to react quickly to changes in the wind direction and speed or risk losing control of the aircraft and crashing into the sea. Engine failure. Engine failure is a risk that all pilots face, but it's especially dangerous when flying on an aircraft carrier. With limited space on the flight deck and the risk of falling into the sea, an engine failure during takeoff or landing can have catastrophic consequences. Pilots must be prepared to react quickly and make decisions that will ensure the safety of the aircraft and its crew. Deck motion. Another risk that pilots face when flying on a carrier is the movement of the flight deck. This can be caused by rough seas, which can make the deck rise and fall suddenly and unpredictably. Pilots must be able to adjust their flight path in real time to compensate for these movements or risk losing control of the aircraft and crashing into the sea. Approach errors. Finally, one of the biggest risks that pilots face when landing on a carrier is the risk of approach errors. This can happen when a pilot misjudges the altitude, speed, or trajectory of the aircraft, or when the aircraft systems fail to function properly. Approach errors can result in a crash landing or even a complete loss of control of the aircraft, putting the crew and the aircraft at risk. Depending on the situation, the following emergency procedures may be initiated on the flight deck. Evacuation of personnel. The priority in any emergency on a flight deck is the safety of the personnel. If the cable breaks, all personnel on the flight deck will be directed to evacuate the area to a new location. Assessment of damage. Once the flight deck has been evacuated, the extent of the damage caused by the broken cable will be assessed. This may involve visual inspections as well as more detailed inspections using specialized equipment and techniques. Securing the aircraft. If there are any aircraft on the flight deck, they'll be secured to prevent them from being damaged or causing further damage. This may involve securing the aircraft to the deck using chocks and tie downs or relocating the aircraft to a different location on the deck. Control of any fires. If the broken cable has caused a fire, the carrier's firefighting teams will be called upon to quickly contain and extinguish the fire. This will involve using firefighting equipment, such as fire hoses and foam, to control and extinguish the flames. Repair or replace the cable. Once the extent of the damage has been assessed and any fires have been controlled, the broken cable will be repaired or replaced. This may involve splicing the broken cable back together or installing a new cable to replace the damaged one. Resuming flight operations. Once the cable has been repaired or replaced and the flight deck has been deemed safe, flight operations will be resumed. This will involve preparing the aircraft for takeoff and landing again, as well as monitoring the flight deck and aircraft for any potential issues. But the story doesn't end there. The art of landing and taking off from a flight deck in the middle of the sea is a testament to human ingenuity and technology. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is a small and rapidly moving platform, surrounded by the vast and unpredictable expanse of the sea. To take off and land safely, a pilot must navigate through a complex set of procedures and protocols and make split-second decisions based on real-time information. Here's a step-by-step -step look at what happens when a pilot takes off and lands on an aircraft carrier. Preparation. Before taking off or landing, the pilot will receive a detailed briefing from the air traffic control tower. The tower will provide information on the wind direction, speed, and turbulence, as well as any other factors that could affect the flight. Launch. When it's time to take off, the pilot will taxi the aircraft to the bow of the flight deck, where it'll be hooked up to the carrier's launch system. This system uses a series of powerful hydraulic catapults to launch the aircraft into the air, giving it the speed and altitude it needs to begin its ascent. Climbing. 
Once the aircraft is airborne, the pilot will engage the aircraft's controls and climb to a safe altitude. This is when the pilot must make some quick decisions based on real-time information, such as wind direction and speed, to ensure a safe and successful flight. Approaching the carrier. When it's time to land, the pilot will approach the carrier from the rear, flying in a pattern that allows the tower to monitor and control the aircraft's descent. As the aircraft approaches the carrier, it will lower its tail hook to try and catch the carrier's arresting gear, which consists of a series of cables and hydraulic systems that are designed to slow the aircraft and bring it to a safe stop on the flight deck. Touchdown. Just before the aircraft touches down on the flight deck, its tail hook makes contact with the arresting cables, which slow the aircraft and bring it to a stop. This is a critical moment as the aircraft must come to a complete stop within a very short distance or risk overshooting the deck and falling into the sea. Recovery. Once the aircraft has come to a stop, the pilot will disengage from the arresting cables and taxi the aircraft to a secure location on the flight deck. This will be the final step of the landing process, when the pilot will be congratulated on a safe and successful mission. In conclusion, taking off and landing on an aircraft carrier is an incredible feat of aviation that requires a unique combination of skill, technology and teamwork. Despite the many risks and challenges that pilots face when flying on a carrier, these brave individuals are constantly pushing the limits of what's possible. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the adrenaline-fueled world of carrier landings. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more captivating insights into Navy Sea life. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.